Focus is a skill, not a superpower. When it comes to productivity, creativity, or doing just work for life in general, the most common complaint I'll hear is, I can't focus. I find it difficult to focus for long periods of time. I sit down and try to do the work, but then just end up scrolling on my phone for an hour. What people don't realize is that, that's normal behavior. You are not alone in this. Trying to focus well when you're untrained is one of the most difficult things to do. So that's normal. But what pisses me off the most is when unproductive people look at productive people as if they have some sort of magical energy or power that allows them to focus better or be more productive. And that I don't have that because I was just born different or I'll never get that or have that. So I might as well just not try and blame my inability to focus as the reason for my lack of success or not getting the things I want. I call BS. Do you think people were magically born able to focus well? That for some reason, it's just a switch they can turn on and be hyper productive, hyper focused and get all their shit done. No. Focus is a skill, which means it can be trained, but that also means it requires work and practice to develop the skill to be able to focus for longer periods of time and get shit done. I never used to be able to focus like I can now. During the entirety of college and my school life, I had terrible study practices and habits. I would sit down and muscle through the study material and PowerPoint slides, and I would just read them over and over again, and that was my studying. And I didn't realize there were actual ways to study better, ways to learn to be more focused, and ways to become more effective with your time such that you can get all your stuff done within just a few hours. Part of it was because I never realized there were study practices that could be personalized to me and how my mind works in the first place. I was doing it wrong because I didn't know better so my focus was spread thin and I was unproductive. Thankfully, I still pass, but I do sometimes wonder how much better I could have done if I just learned to focus better. So again, focus is a skill, not a superpower. And if focus is a skill, that means focus can be trained. If focus can be trained, that means you can learn it. If you can train your skill of focus, hard things become easy, you feel more capable about yourself, and life in general just becomes easier. Leveling up your skill of focus is like getting a cheat code for life. So today I'm going to share with you the things I do to focus better when it comes to working on photography projects, YouTube videos, and even just writing the newsletter. Not everything in here is going to work well for you, but just take what's useful for you and apply it to your life. Let's get started. Start small, damn it. It's a common beginner misconception to think that we need to work for super long periods of time to be quote unquote productive, and that if we don't work hard and for a long period of time, it's not a success. If I don't study or work for X amount of hours, then what's the point? If I'm not able to focus for a long period of time, then I might as well just not do the thing in the first place. Again, bullshit. You don't need to work all day every day to be productive. You can be productive for a short period of time and still get a lot of stuff done. And if you're just starting, of course you're not going to be able to focus for six hours because you can't even focus for one. So what we have to do is build ourselves from the ground up, from the smallest increment of what we can do based on our skill level right now until we can eventually get better. So start small, damn it. Set a 15 minute timer of doing the thing. If 15 minutes is too long, try five minutes or whatever amount you think you can accomplish today. I'm serious. Don't underestimate the power of small increments. Building from a 15 minute timer a day is what allowed me to read every day for the past year and a half to two years. And before that, I had stopped reading entirely. But 15 minutes was a manageable enough number for me to do every day and get back into that cycle of doing things. You see, it's oftentimes the hardest part is just getting started. But once the engines are going, they work on their own. And this is something you get better at as well. When 15 minutes of focus becomes your baseline, 30 doesn't seem that far away. And 30 can easily become an hour, two hours, or three hours within just a few weeks. And how many hours of focus do you actually need to get all your stuff done? If it's quality focus work, probably not that many. So try this. Start small. Start so absurdly small that you'll laugh at your own little increments. And then become magically impressed when little things turn into big things. Find your focus hour. The focus hour is the single most important hour of your day. This was a concept I named myself to help myself remember and prioritize my time. It's based on the realization that there are simply hours where we are more productive than others. Times where work is super easy, everything's flowing, you're in tune, and everything is easy. We've all had these moments when it's just happening and we don't even have to try that hard and we are hyper productive. That's the time period where your brain is at its best. If you can tap into that every day, you can turn one hour of work into something big. Now obviously, one hour is just a benchmark. Depending on how you operate, it can easily turn into four or six. And this is a skill you can extend as you improve your focus as well. But the point is to focus on that time of day when you are the most productive. This could be at 4 a.m. in the morning or 12 at midnight. Circle it, star it, put it on your calendar, and do work during that time. That way you can maximize your hours and free up your day to do other things that you want to do. And remember, 
One ultra productive hour is more effective than six mediocre meandering wandering hours. Don't try to multitask. Contrary to what many people think, we are not good multitaskers. You can Google it, there are plenty of studies on this. And what people think is multitasking really is just task switching. Because when we try to multitask, we are really just switching back and forth between two different things. But we are never doing two different things literally at the same time. Even if you can argue that you can drive and talk, the driving element is just a passive thing that you're doing, not really focused on that. Plus, task switching is known to be a productivity killer because it's something that decreases your cognitive horsepower every time you switch in between two different things. Imagine trying to drive while turning your car on and off at every stoplight. It would be impossible to get anywhere. Therefore, don't try to multitask because it'll often make you less productive, not more productive. Instead, learn to focus on one thing at a time. That's focus in a nutshell, eliminating everything but the one thing you're working on. To make this easier, you can even announce it in your head or out loud. Say, for the next hour, I'm going to work on this and nothing else. And then set the timer and get started. Eliminate distractions. An underrated method to focusing better is to eliminate distractions. We all know it inherently, but distractions make it harder to focus. Yet we never take the conscious time to eliminate them before we work. Instead, we usually muscle through the work and then when a distraction comes up, we entertain it and then we try and get back on track and do the work again. And I'm not talking about breaks here. Those are different. I'm talking about phone use, extra tabs you have open, checking your email, alerts and notifications, and sometimes even music. These are all distractions that can ruin your focus and take away from the work itself. It's like trying to shoot a free throw in a basketball game and some heckler is constantly screaming at you, trying to get you to miss. It's not impossible, but think about how much harder it is to concentrate by doing that. So by eliminating distractions, we'll be able to focus better naturally. Put your phone in a place that you can't see it just temporarily. Close all unnecessary tabs. Find a quiet space to work. Try those three things and you should be able to focus better. Parkinson's Law. You can make a point that pretty much all of productivity boils down to Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law basically states that work expands to the time available for its completion. Meaning, if I give myself five hours to do something, it'll take five hours to do that thing. Now obviously, this doesn't mean we can compress a 10-hour project into one minute simply by giving ourselves only one minute to do it. What it really means is that we should be more careful about giving ourselves more time than is necessary to do something. Because the downside of that is that we can end up taking much longer to complete a project that should have taken us very very little time. So something I like to do is work in 15 or 30 minute Pomodoros. Based on the task, I'll judge how long I think it'll take me, set the timer, and just get to work. And much bigger tasks or projects are broken down into several 30 minute Pomodoros. That way I can make sure that I'm always using my time effectively. This is something that has helped me become more productive because simply keeping a timer in my desktop background has me conscious of how I'm spending my time and how productive I'm being. And so being conscious of the time will force you to focus better because you simply can't sit around and procrastinate. You don't have three hours to do this thing, you have six 30 minute blocks. So how you apply this to your work is up to you, but I would recommend to find a way to integrate Parkinson's law into your work life. Because it's one of those productivity hacks and focus hacks that I feel actually works. Breaks. Breaks are essential to maintaining focus over long periods of time. I almost left this part out of this video, but I chose to include it because of how important it is. When we're doing any sort of mental work that requires real concentration, we can't stay in that state for an extended period of time. Now obviously it's not a black or white thing, sometimes if I find myself in that state, I'll just keep working and keep going. But sometimes when we're doing work, it'll reach a point where it becomes hard to focus, hard to concentrate. Our mind isn't clear and it feels like we're going through the same loops over and over again. When that happens, I usually just take a five minute break walk around, or maybe just stare at the ceiling. This serves as a great mental reset to clear your mind and approach the problem from a new angle or direction. I found this to be one of my most productive focus levers. Because if simply taking a five minute break every now and then leads me to be productive for the next hour or two, that's a great trade off. So what I do now is periodize my work. I'll work in Pomodoros of 30 minutes, set a timer, and take a five minute break. If everything's flowing, I'll just keep working. But if I'm struggling and I feel like I need a break sooner, I'll just take one. So this structure is flexible to how your work is going, but it's something that makes me more productive. And a healthy tip when taking breaks, pace or walk around. I found that movement and changing your environment is something that also helps me reset my brain. So try it out, I think you'll find it useful. 
focus crutches. Next, let's talk about focus crutches. Crutches are things we feel like we need to focus better or to do the work. Stuff like, I need my morning coffee today, or I need music to focus properly. Those are a few examples of some focus crutches. And now personally, I'm a big proponent of coffee. I love coffee. And if I could have it every day healthily for the rest of my life, I would. Trust me, I would. But lately, I've been weaning off coffee. I slowly went from having it every day to one day a week of no coffee. And then I dialed it down to only having coffee every other day. And now I'm trying to do two days, no coffee, one day coffee. And it's been very challenging to say the least. But the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to be dependent on coffee to be able to do my work. There will be plenty of days where I won't have coffee in the future or days where it just feels like I can't focus properly, but I still need to be able to somehow focus and be productive in those moments. And so if I become overly dependent on coffee, it becomes a crutch, not a helper. Which is ironic because I have a cup right now. Today is a coffee day and I am feeling somewhat tired if you can't tell by the bags, but let's ignore this for a second. Think about this. We started drinking coffee because it helped us. We either liked the taste, it woke us up, or it made us feel good. And then we started having it every day to the point where if we didn't have our coffee, something was wrong. We feel the withdrawal symptoms, it becomes hard to focus, our mood is unstable, and we say, I need a coffee. Not want a coffee, need. Those are words of dependence that lead to an inability to function unless we've had our cup. And from that point on, coffee no longer becomes a productivity boost, but a productivity requirement. It no longer becomes a benefit, rather a detriment. And again, I love coffee, so I get it. And you obviously don't have to do this one if you don't want to. But I no longer wanted coffee to dictate my state of mind or how productive I could be. I wanna be in a state where I can function with or without it. Because I still remember how life was before I got hooked on coffee. And back then, not having coffee wasn't even a problem. So the point is, I'm just trying this out for now. I'm not eliminating it entirely. I just wanna see what happens if I can get to a state where I'm less dependent on it. And presumably, being less dependent should improve my ability to focus. We'll see. Maybe I should just try decaf. Learn to prioritize effectively. The final key to mastering your focus is to learn to prioritize effectively. Prioritizing properly is what changed my productivity forever. Before that, I used to be a mess. I would still get stuff done, but I would go through a list of tasks and try to tackle my entire to-do list. And I didn't realize there were only a few things I really should have been focusing on. Because although everything may seem important, some things are just more important than others. For example, you might say walking your dog is important, but is it more important than putting out the fire in your kitchen? Probably not. That was an unlikely scenario of things to choose between, but you get the point. The real challenge comes when this gap isn't so clear. For example, is it utterly necessary for me to get a video out every week? It's a preference I'd like to, but probably not necessary. Now between getting a video done and finishing a project like a photography zine, which is more important? That's a tough one because both are important. However, if I really thought about it, finishing the photography zine is probably more important because not getting the video out won't kill me. That was an example of something I had to juggle in between for the past few months. Prioritizing my time between two seemingly important projects, one of which was slightly more important. And that's what prioritization is. Prioritization is not only understanding what's important and what is not important, but to what degree is this important? Because chances are there are a lot of things that seem equally important, but one is more important than the other. So prioritization is a skill. To prioritize effectively, we must delineate between what is important and what is not. And then we must be able to determine how important is this. This is a judgment that is built over years and years of practice and learning. It's also an underrated skill that pays off very, very well in the long run. We can save so much time and energy by simply not working on unimportant things. So get it in your head everything is not important. Here's an easy way to identify what is important and what is not. Ask yourself, if I could do only one thing today, what would it be? Here's another great question. What can I do today that will make tomorrow better? These questions will allow us to identify what actually matters. And the work itself will become easier because we are not spread thin between five different things we're trying to do. We only have to do one thing today. And that one thing is the most important thing. So there's no need to worry about doing these other things that you feel like you have to do because you're working on the most important thing anyways. And if you're working on the most important thing, why worry about not finishing the fifth most important thing on your list? You won't because you're getting the most for your time right Right now. So if you want to master focus and become super productive, here's what you got to do. One, start small, damn it. Build your focus 15 minutes at a time. Don't try to climb the mountain overnight. Two, find your focus hour. This is when you are at your best and when you will get the most for your focus. Three, don't try to multitask. It'll make you less productive, not more productive. Four, eliminate distractions. 
Lock up the phone, close the tabs, eliminate everything but the work in front of you. 5. Abuse Parkinson's Law Set timers and become amazed at how much you can actually get done in such a short span of time. 6. Take breaks. A small step away can actually reset your brain and make you more productive. 7. Get off your focus crutches. The things that once helped you can now hurt you. 8. Learn to prioritize effectively. Working on the wrong things isn't productive. So do any one of these eight things and you will be able to focus better. I hope this video helped. If it did, please share this with another friend who you also think might help. Also, my new photography zine, The Sinking Sun, is now available. There's not going to be too many of these, so grab your copy now while they're still here. And as always, guys, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Peace.